All right, so the owner wants to put the ENG that was in his Jackson into his Kramer, and the only problem with that is it don't fit. So I have the humbucker template over here, and I'm going to end up routing this opening up over here so it will fit just fine. Here we go. All right, so I got my shortest router bit on my router, and I got the plate mounted. This is screwed down, it's not taped down. All the holes line up for the mounting plate, so I don't have to worry about that. It matches the uh, mounting ring for the pickup itself. I got the depth set, and now it's time to start cutting over here. So here we go. So I gotta drop it down a little bit more. And I don't go too far with it. Just enough to cut the depth. That's about right there. Alright, here we go. So it looks like this worked out really nice. And I am pretty much all the way down on both sides. Should be able to put that pick up in now, but no problem. Go ahead and put my stuff away and be right back. Alright, so I'm going to remove my template. Check the body for any type of damage. Nope, that worked out really nice. All right, no wood chips anywhere. So I think I'm going to do just dry fit this for right now and see how she fits. Before it didn't drop in, now she just drop in. Oh, beautiful. Drops right in now. Drops right in. No problems. Cool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shield this a little bit. Because I just took off some of the shielding that was around the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this with some shielding tape. And uh, start installing a pickup. Alright, so I got the pickup installed. It's an EMG81. 
came out of the Jackson. I put some little bit of the shielding over the ground wire for the claw, just added protection to keep it from scratching anything. I got both cavities, pickup and control cavities shielded. And what I did to connect the two cavities from one to the other is I took a piece of wire, cut a narrow strip of the shielding tape and ran it through the hole and I ended up putting a nice little connection between the two of them. So if he ever switches out pickups or anything on this thing and wants to go with maybe a push and pull pot for anything else to you know, change up things on this in the future, everything will be all ready to do so and shouldn't really have too much of a noise problem. The battery is mounted and it's a perfect spot, ain't going anywhere. And uh, one volume, that's it. So it's pretty clean as far as wires go. I left the wire for the pickup uh, long just in case he wants to transfer it or move it over or do something with another guitar with the same pickup. The only thing I had to do was I had to cut out the hole a lot bigger for the output jack because of the fact, well, it's a new output jack, it has an extra prong on it. These are a little bit wider than uh, the standard. Here's the standard and, you know, not going to reuse it. Plus I need the uh, extra prong for the battery so it makes a connection on the ground. So I got ground wire is yellow, white wire is the hot wire, and then this black one here is the ground. I wanted to match the same wire that was coming from the new uh, plug that I put on here for the battery. The old one is alright, but it's got like a cardboard sleeve on it and I really didn't care for that. It's kind of really old. And that came from the Jackson. So, Jackson is over here and that is pretty much drying. I got the touch-up paint in a couple of spots and I ended up doing some clear over those touch-up spots to blend them in a little bit. There was one spot that was kind of scraped up by the uh, by the Floyd Rose and then the one around the edge. So I matched the paint up pretty good but not quite perfect. So as you can see over here too, the little bit of the mint green that's poking out from around the holes for the mount for the uh, plate for the output jack. So kind of a nice effect that I ended up doing with this uh, uh, opal green pearl has kind of worked out really nice so I'm gonna go ahead and put the output jack in I've got some heat shrinking tubing that I'm also going to use I did some heat shrinking tubing inside here obviously you know you do the heat shrinking tubing anytime you solder two wires together but uh, I also do it on all the prongs as well just in case you never know if something happens or whatever and it ends up touching something and you didn't want it to so, all right, I'm going to get soldering over here and get this thing back together.
so the dollar bell Kramer is complete. Not much more left to do, exception of let the string stretch. I stretched the strings out after I installed them, getting it up to tune, and uh, just let nature take its course as far as that goes. Tomorrow I'll retune it if need to be, check the neck, and then check my intonation on here to make sure that that is still set where it's supposed to be. It really shouldn't change. But other than that, uh, after that I can probably box this thing up and ship it out. There's really nothing to do now, exception of con continue working on the Jackson guitar and get the Floyd Rose, Jackson Floyd Rose installed on that, get some strings on it, polish it up a little bit. So what was done with this guitar? Well, it was measured before taking it apart. And I wrote everything down so when I do my setup I was able to put things back the way they were and you know so the owner doesn't have to do anything as far as setup goes on it because he sent it to me set up the way he liked it it's going back the same way the neck was taken off the guitar was pretty much stripped of everything that's on it exception of the paint although the black burst was the only thing that was stripped off of it luckily the owner sprayed clear coat over the dollar bill sealing them in before putting the black burst on here which uh, was a good thing because if he didn't do that I would really have a hard time changing the burst uh, and not having the black come through especially the black on the dollar bills from the overspray um, right now the dollar bills are a lot more whiter than they used to be because of the overspray from the black burst so that worked out really nice the neck was basically stripped as far as the finish that was on the back of it goes that was all redone now the neck has a matte finish on the back of it the frets have all been plucked and the radius on the fretboard was redone new frets level crowned polished and there are no sharp fret ends here all of the hardware including the little screws that were on this thing all got polished so that means the back plate screws for the controls and the springs for the Floyd Rose the knob the output jack the back plate for the neck the strap locks locking nut string retainer tuners everything got polished and what I recommend which isn't bad to use is mothers there's no shine like mothers no this is not a commercial no I'm not getting paid by these guys but I've been using mothers for years and I don't mean just only on guitars I've been using it for years works great on aluminum works great on chrome and works great on stainless steel and uh, works great on guitar chrome too including the um, I wouldn't use it on gold plated because of the fact it does remove depending on how cheap the plating was done but I've used it on um, what do they call it Cosmo black uh, I have not used it on painted surfaces because of the fact of like I said it could possibly remove the finish if it removes cheap uh, plating then it will remove or do something with black painted or uh, unless it has been powder coated then that's a different story so the paint wise goes is I stripped this thing down luckily the dollar bills were clear coated before the black uh, burst was put on here so that made it my job a little bit easier to remove the black burst leaving an exposed basically outline of all the dollar bills and how they were cut so when I applied the white on here first to cover that up after that I ended up using um, well before that I ended up using the optic green pearl and it was too transparent so I stripped that back off hit the outside edges with white to kind of hide the outline of the dollar bills and stuff because a lot of them were cut unevenly and then glued onto the, excuse me excuse, glued onto the body of the guitar including the headstock so adding the white hit all of that so after I put the green on here again I didn't like the way it looked it just had too much of a gold look to it and had too much of a um, transparent as far as being able to see and not covering the way I wanted to cover 
So I ended up sanding that back, giving it a fresh start, and putting the mint green on top of it. The mint green looked good, and it was a pearl. The mint green looked good, but when I clear coated it, it kind of popped a lot more. So with a lot of paints and stuff like that, until you add the clear coat to it, uh, even with staining and dyeing, when you add clear coat to it, it changes a lot of the characteristics of whatever your stain is and then changes the uh, way the paint looks as well. In some cases, it's a good thing, but in this case here with the mint green, I didn't like it. So what I ended up doing is scuffing the mint green. So when I put the optic green pearl on that, I had something to bite into and uh, it would stick. It also did a thing where, like, you can almost see different areas of shading where the mint green is coming out. All right. So the op uh, optic green pearl, I gotta make sure I don't get confused with that. The optic green pearl is a transparent color. And it started to show uh, a lot of the characteristics of the mint green coming through it when you move it around. And it, it's it's kind of... It changed the color of the optic green pearl, but it's still optic green pearl. Now the dollar bills on the headstock and the body all got clear coated with, well not really a clear coat, clear coat because it's a matte finish, with a pearl paint. Okay, So when you look at it in sunlight, you'll really be able to see the headstock kind of glitter a little bit and the body as well. and under fluorescent lighting eh, it's a little iffy you can see it but it's not as strong as it would be outside but it's there and then with the pearl that is inside of the optic green um yeah it, it really like connects the two together pretty nicely so there's really not much more to say about this thing um it got pretty much redone you know it's the area over here where it was the finish and the dollar bills were separating from the bondo that the owner put inside of the uh, pickup cavity under the neck, it was separating, the finish was separating from it, so what I ended up doing with that is drilling a few holes, because so I wanted to find some way to get in there and fill that space. So what I ended up doing is clamping a block on here and drilling a few holes, pushing CA glue inside there until it came back out. And then I would seal up those two holes, drill another two holes, push CA glue inside there until it came back out. And then I did it three times. So here, here, and here, which basically covers the whole thing, uh, to make sure that I seal that area, it's not gonna like cave in, and it should not ever try to lift again sanding everything down after clear coating. The headstock has, still has a few little minor defects in the headstock. Uh, the chip has been fixed, but there was some stuff that was going on over here. I saw it in the video um, when he first sent me about working on this thing. If I were to sand it into the dollar bills, I would have a problem. So I couldn't get rid of the, I don't know what you would call it, but you can kind of see it over here. Uh, not very good, but when you get really close to it, you can. It's flat, so there's no uneven or waviness or anything going on with the headstock finish at all. But when you look at the finish on top of the headstock, like what's under the clear coat, that's when you kind of notice that there's some funny going on inside there. Like I said, if I would try to get that out, I'd probably damage the dollar bills on here and the Kramer logo, and that probably would not have been a good good idea. So, but everything's nice and flat. I rounded the edges over on the headstock to where the you don't feel any of the transition from paint to wood. So I'm not going to ship this thing back with the tremolo bar on it, okay, with the whammy bar on it. Um, the problem with doing that is, is that you're putting pressure on that bar and shipping is probably not a good idea to have that on there. So it's a screw on. I'll have that inside the box. So everything that's going back 
from this guitar. Now this got the pickup, which is an EMG81 out of the Jackson guitar. I put a brand new CA, um, CTA, uh, was it C, CTA, no, CTS, ah, got it. New CTS pot inside there, new output jack, and all new wiring, brand new batteries been installed. You plug it in, activates the battery, unplug it, you know, just like a regular active guitar go, it works. Um, I do have a bunch of parts that I will be shipping back from the Jackson and this one. So, he'll see that, you know, uh, I got the pot, I got the output jack, uh, some of the wiring, you know, whatever that was installed inside this guitar is all going back to the owner. I have so much parts. I don't need any more. Um, I've got a box filled. I've got all kinds of pickups. I've got all kinds of, of you know, I buy brand new pots as far as uh, volume and tone controls. I buy brand new switches, so I don't recycle too much of the older parts because you never know how long they're going to last and they could fail at any time. So I don't recycle them. I basically throw a lot of that away. But if it comes off of somebody else's guitar, it all goes back to the owner. They could throw it away if they want to, recycle it, keep it for souvenirs. I don't know. But uh, that's their stuff. That's going back to them. All right, so this is basically going to be put off to the side, and I can focus on the Jackson getting that done now. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. I will catch up with all you all later, and uh, be well.